Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's talk about how we can use the Smith normal form of a matrix to find out how as a map, um, we can determine exactly what it, the pre-image of zero would be, which is another way of saying that is what the kernel of the matrix is. In particular, what vectors span that kernel you can do fairly nicely with the Smith normal form. First, let's just think um, if we have what we're looking for is this times something is going to be the zero vector. And that's what we're after. Let's see how we can do that when we do the Smith normal form. So what we'll do is, <clears throat> uh, is we will write out, um, see how this is uh, the domain it has three elements. So it lives in R3. So what are we going to do is we're going to write out off the side the identity in R3. And whenever we do a column operation at all, we'll do it over here too. And we'll see how it pops out as we do the Smith normal form. OK, so first thing to do is we need to, um, well, get a zero. We can use this one, declare out this, make that 0. So let's say. Let's take this row, multiply it by negative one and, and add it to that one. So that would give us um, a zero minus three and one. Great. Now we can use some column operations. Do this to clear this out. So negative five times that, we'll do it over here. So we get, um, so negative five times that and then add it over here. So that would give us a negative five right there and done over here. That just gives us a zero. Okay. Now, one times negative two, all right, applied to that. Um, you know, that would give us a zero over there. And over here, that would give us negative two. Okay. All right. And then that Y is zero. So far, so good. Great. Now, okay, we got to get a one right here to make this, you know, to make this working right. Um, so we could, oh, that was supposed to be a zero. Sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. Zero. Okay. One, zero, zero, zero here because it just cleared out with that. Okay. So now we need to get a one here. Now we can do that just by interchanging these two columns. So let's just do it over there. Let's just chain, interchange those two columns. So we're going to get one, zero, zero, um, negative two, zero, one, and negative five, one, zero, with those interchanged. Okay, and interchanging these, we get a one, zero, zero, and a zero, one, negative three. Great. Now, let's do a column operation. Three times this column added to that column. Okay, so three times this column added to that column would give you, let's see, so negative six and negative five would be negative 11. And it's just one. And so we're doing positive three times, right? Okay, yes, so three, um, so there'd just be three. Okay, perfect. And in doing that over here, we would just get zero. Now, you notice how this represents the kernel over here. Okay, so let's look at the kernel. So let's look at this part right here. When we do column operations, what we're doing is we're throwing in a map that happens before this, okay, before this. And so the output of this, of the output of the column map is actually going to be the kernel of this. Well, the kernel of the Smith normal form is just that standard basis vector, or E3, and the image of E3 is actually going to be um, right here. Um, and that's actually the kernel. So that's actually, so right here, multiples of negative 11, 1, 3 represent, so all multiples of that, so the span of that represent um, the kernel. And we could read that off simply just by looking at what happens to the identity matrix, doing just the column operations only on the identity matrix here that we do over here in the Smith normal form. 
um, we could check our work just to make sure that's accurate. Let's see, um, negative 11 and five and three. Yep, that gives us zero. And negative 11, um, two and nine. Yep, gives us zero. So it's very accurate. That was uh, kind of a fancy fun way to find the kernel of a matrix, at least the span of vectors that create that kernel. Thanks for watching.